Conditional jump is also called jump if instruction. It will jump if certain condition is true. The instruction takes two bytes in memory: the instruction and the target address. After the instruction fetching step, the instruction is here, and the instruction pointer is pointing to the possible address. Say we use the six wire for conditional jump. So we need a low computing bit and high low high instruction bits. No registers are needed. These four bits will be used to indicate the conditions. Now let's think about what jump if instruction needs to do. It needs to decide which instruction to execute next. So it needs to put the right instruction address into this pointer. Two possibilities here. If the condition is met, the pointer should have the attached address. If not, it should have the default next address. To do this, we need three steps. So three conditional step wires. The first step is to get those two possible addresses ready. First, turn on instruction pointer to send the address. And turn on memory address register to receive it. Now the address is here. The memory unit with the target address is selected. In the meantime, we need to increase the address by one and store it into ACC. So turn on plus one wire to increase the address. Turn on ACC to receive the default next address. Now the two candidates are ready. One is here, and one is in ACC. Which one should be moved to the pointer? We're going to do that in two steps. First, we move the default address. Then, if the condition is met, we replace it with the attached address. So step five: turn on ACC to send the next address. Turn on instruction pointer to accept it. Now the address is here. Step six: If the condition is met, we will override the instruction pointer with user attached address. So connect RAM to send the user's address, and connect instruction pointer to accept it. But whether such overriding happens or not depends on if the condition is met. So we need a condition line connected to the end gate. Now, how to drive the condition line? Remember, we already have the two condition flags stored in here. Users need to indicate in the instruction which flag to check. We have four unused bits. Say we use the two middle bits, one for the larger flag, the other for the equal flag. Users pick which conditions to check by putting high or low bits here. For our Fibonacci example, we need a jump equal to check if the running address equals to the target address. So we turn on the equal bit, turn off the larger bit. We use AND gates to combine users' flag choice with the flags. And place an OR gate here to make sure that the condition wire can be turned on when any of the user specified condition is true. If it's not true, the last step won't execute, leaving the default instruction address in the pointer. The purpose of having jump if instruction is for the users to control what to do when exceptions happen. Here we have two bits unused, so we can create two more conditions for jump if to use. So, what other exceptional cases we might face during computing them? The first exception is when you have a zero result. A zero result could mean many things. For example, you have a zero denominator, so you need to terminate the program, or you just hit a solution, so you can do something else. Whatever it means, we need to design the hardware 
allowing users to choose what to do. Users will use the last bit to indicate if they want to check the zero flag. On the ALU side, we need a zero comparator checking the output. It will check if the result is zero or not. It will output a zero flag. So zero flag is combined with user's choice bit to also power this condition line. Here is how to build this zero comparator. When users perform operations on two numbers, and result appears at the output end. So we take A bits from the output wires using a series of OR gates feeding into one another, checking if any of the previous bits are high. If none of them is high, the final line will output low. Using an inverter, it flips it to high, telling us that it is zero. The last exceptional condition is a carry-out condition. We use the first bit to indicate that. When will we have a carry-out condition during computing? When we add two numbers, the carry-out bit can tell us that we are reaching the computing limit. There might be an overflow. So this adder might have a carry-out. Hence, we use a buffer here, controlled by the decoder, to allow the adder to save the carry-out flag into a memory cell. These two shifters will have shift-out bits. We can also use them as carry-out. Now we can include the carry-out bit into our condition check. This jump instruction offers four conditions to break a loop. We set the carry bit to low because our example is to jump equal. But users can pick any conditions to check, and you can pick more than one condition. For example, you can turn on 2 bits, 3 bits, or 4 bits to check all of them. With the jump if instruction wired, let's review our program to see what will happen after the jump equal instruction. If the condition is not met, so the regular jump will take over, directing us back to the loop. But when the condition is met, the jump equal instruction will skip this regular jump and gets us here, for example, exiting the loop.